The Neuro Revolution, how brain science is changing our world. I've spent the last several years positioned in full view of the coming attractions now being projected by some of the world's most brilliant minds. My job is to relentlessly track neuroscientific projects underway within the many businesses, universities, and independent labs now pursuing breakthroughs. My mission is to synthesize all the information that's flowing, shaping it into the best informed ideas possible about where the rubber is going to meet the road. Neuroscience, writ large, has the biggest peril stamp on it ever. I am stunned myself by how well we can eavesdrop and get practical measures of what's going on in people's heads. Detecting when people are telling the truth is a superheated issue. It impacts our legal system and our society as a whole. Corporations and governments are already spending millions to find out whether neuroscience will radically improve our ability to tell reality from falsehood. Terrorist from bystander, crook from innocent citizen. The CIA and other intelligence agencies have been throwing millions at neuroscience researchers for a few years now in hopes that they'll soon develop and deliver extremely advanced tools for protecting national security. Truth detection by neuroscientific means is a new phenomenon and it has shown astounding accuracy. Researchers have demonstrated that remarkable potential exists for learning how to access our mental downloads and make our brains spill certain types of secrets. They do this currently by watching to see whether memory-related areas of the brain light up under very specific kinds of conditions, such as seeing evidence that would only resonate in the mind of someone who knows intimate details of a given crime. Two different approaches to brain-based lie detection are the main competitors now for research funding and practical application in courts and beyond. Both rely on finding activity in regions of your brain where memories go to stay. One of these methods for tracing guilty responses is called brain fingerprinting. The name was devised by the inventor of the technique, Dr. Lawrence Farwell. He's not the only one who believes the potentials are great. His research work has been extensively funded by the CIA and tested by the FBI and US Navy. The other approach, which uses fMRI, is based on something called the guilty knowledge test. Daniel Langelman of the University of Pennsylvania published his early work with this test in 2001. Billions of dollars are waiting to be made by credible neuroscientific lie detection. The tension within neuroscience circles going after truth detection methods, the push and pull between scruples and marketplace potential may well be ratcheted up higher than most people can bear. The entrepreneur, Joel Huizenga, estimates the market for accurate lie detection might be 36 billion dollars annually. As the power to decode the brain accelerates, changes will sweep quickly across every society in a slightly different way. In more open and democratic societies, truth detection systems will protect and free the innocent, a phenomenal improvement for those fortunate enough to prove their innocence with the new technological tools. But we can expect that closed and autocratic regimes will leverage the same technologies to silence dissent and enforce loyalty to the current leadership. It is easy to see why the CIA and other intelligence agencies underwrite so much of the research in neuroscientific truth detection. Fighting Neuro Warfare the development of sophisticated neuroweapons is going to create a perpetual state of tension between promise and peril. In the development of neuro warfare, we will experience vast amounts of worry, debate and conjecture over what the ultimate effects will be. Emotional detection systems will pervade public areas as global surveillance networks seek out terrorists and criminals. The preponderance of the research now creating our emergent neurosociety is underwritten by America's defense spending. According to the Association of American Universities, nearly 350 colleges and universities held Pentagon research contracts in 2002, representing 60% of basic research funding. 
The leader in 2003 funding was MIT, which drew a half billion dollars. What if some product of neuroscientific research could convince all nations, including those labeled rogue states, the great Satan, or members of the axis of evil, to eliminate entirely their weapons of mass destruction? Imagine that degree of promise rooted in the same body of research that could also manifest weapons so gruesome we can barely conceive of them. Governments with untold billions at their disposal are steadily increasing their investment in neurotechnology. We're on the cusp of eerie and disturbing developments that seem like they've been taken straight out of the Manchurian candidate. Sophisticated neuro weapons for coercive truth detection and the erasure of memories are already on the horizon. Neuro warfare is already a fact. Its expansion is as inevitable as the massive changes coming in all the other segments of society. In an article published a decade ago by the U.S. Army War College, military analyst Timothy Thomas used the title, The Mind Has No Firewall. It laid down this challenge. This article examines energy-based weapons, psychotropic weapons, and other developments designed to alter the ability of the human body to process stimuli. According to Thomas, a Russian writer named N. Anisimov, working for the horrifically named Moscow Anti-Psychotronic Center, came up with the term psychoterrorism to describe weapons that were being developed in the former Soviet Union. Anisimov defined psychotronic weapons as those that can remove, edit, and replace memories in a human brain. A former major in the Russian army reported in a February 1997 military journal that many weapons fitting the psychotronic definition were being developed throughout the world. Some were then already in prototype stages. But research had already been carried out concerning possible USSR versus US psychotronic warfare even before The Mind Has No Firewall was published. Disturbingly titled Project Pandora, the research was run by the psychology division within the psychiatry research section of Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. Pandora was initiated after we learned that the Soviet government had, from 1953 to 1976, beamed microwave radiation at the United States Moscow Embassy. The January 2008 issue of Aviation Week carried an article based on interviews with the woman who oversees some of the most provocative current DARPA research. Dr. Amy Cruz began serving as a tech consultant to DARPA's director immediately after receiving her doctorate in neuroscience from the University of Illinois. Now she is in charge of some of the agency's literally most mind-boggling research. Among the items now on her plate, research into computer analysis of brain waves detected from satellites without the subject's knowledge. It's expected to help intelligence analysts precisely identify and locate targets based on the hostile thoughts of enemy forces, and to help leaders in the theater of operations know if their deployed troops are alert enough to realize the intensity of whatever situations they're about to face. Experiments have been run with soldiers whose brain waves are seen by their commanders via wireless computers. When a commander knows a soldier has gone into tunnel vision from information overload, he will know that he has to count on someone else for key actions and commands during an attack. An earlier project called Augmented Cognition, AugCog for short, gave birth to something Cruz is working on currently. That is the Neurotechnology for Intelligence Analysts, NIA program. Phase two of the NIA project began recently. Honeywell's work is being augmented with participation from Teledyne Scientific Imaging and from Columbia University, which is aggressively building its neuroscience reputation. Phase three is expected to produce a prototype that intelligence agencies will road test. According to Honeywell, the technology is nearly ready for operational use. Altogether, AugCog and NIA research has linked several corporate and academic teams with the four different military services. Daimler Chrysler with the U.S. Marine Corps, Lockheed Martin with the Navy, Boeing with the Air Force, 
and Honeywell's team of some 11 industry and university partners with the Army. One of the most brain-twisting and talked-about areas of recent research, for instance, is something called the Active Denial System, or ADS, which was demonstrated in late January 2007 at Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. ADS is the byproduct of larger ongoing research looking for technology that could delete and then replace a person's memories. That last sentence is guaranteed to make any true science fiction fan remember at least three recent mainstream movies with variations on the same theme. Another on the horizon reality actually seems like a direct lift from science fiction, specifically from Minority Report. And in science fact, a team of neuroscientists has actually developed a brain scan based way of finding hints about what a subject is intending to do. The scientists built their research on findings from earlier studies that used fMRI to understand what goes on in the human brain when the topic at hand is racial prejudice, violence, or lying. In the March 6, 2008 edition of Nature, scientists from the University of California, Berkeley, reported development of a method for decoding patterns in visual areas of the brain and using them to know what a subject is looking at. The scary potentials of this announcement are easy to conjure. By exposing subjects to visual images and then recording brain activity, the UC Berkeley researchers first figured out a number of activation patterns. Then they built a mathematical model, an algorithm. Information from the patterns makes it possible for the researchers to look at brain activation and then make a well-informed guess about what kind of visual information has caused it to happen. Moreno's 1999 book, Undo Risk, compiled all he could gather about secret experiments sanctioned in the name of defense. Moreno reports that Department of Defense has around $68 billion to use annually on scientific research and development. The slice of the Pentagon's black operations budget that is earmarked for research and development he estimates at $6 billion or more. At the end of a 2001 Dana Foundation conference on neuroethics, held in San Francisco, Moreno found himself raising his hand in front of a hundred neuroscientists to ask, how come no one here said anything about how this applies to national defense? He left the conference determined to start learning about what was happening regarding possible applications of neuroscience in defense circles. First, he contacted friends who were neuroscientists, no one would speak on the record. They all either were receiving DARPA funding or very much wanted to, but a few were willing to speak off the record, and they helped him get a general sense of some directions being pursued. Next, he googled DARPA and neuroscience. Thousands of pages appeared. A 2008 search registered 152,000 hits. Many of those pages were RFPs, which stands for Requests for Proposals. These documents ask military contractors to say if they are able to build certain devices DARPA wants to have, and also ask how much time and funding they would need. By mentally translating these RFPs from military speak to English, Moreno learned more about what DARPA was hoping to achieve. So we are now in an arms race to create the next generation of unimaginably potent weapons, and also in a race to contain the current generation of destructive capacity. That generation may seem outdated, but it's still the most convincing display of instant human-created hell we've ever seen. Imagine an advanced version of Honeywell's image triage system. It includes group behavioral analysis software, and individual emotion recognition algorithms that key off micro-emotional tics we all exhibit. Intelligence analysts and warrior athletes will scour real-time surveillance feeds from satellites, unmanned predators, robotic insects, and other ingenious surveillance systems in their efforts to seek and destroy enemy combatants. We will eventually see the rise of neuroweapons aimed at shifting the emotional and cognitive capacity of individuals and small populations. 
memory bombs that give individuals short-term amnesia or electronic sleep-inducing weapons may seem in the realm of science fiction. But before the advent of atomic weapons, so was the idea that 140,000 inhabitants of Hiroshima, Japan, could be wiped off the face of the planet with a single bomb. As more and more biology and chemistry labs focus on developing next-generation brain drugs, other researchers working on a different piece of the neurotechnology revolution are designing implantable medical devices that interact with the brain through tiny electrical impulses. Advancing nanotechnology manufacturing techniques will eventually shrink the size of the implantable devices. Surgeries to implant them will become less invasive. Over the next two decades, the impact of neuro devices will be profound. In one way, BCIs, computers either accept commands from the brain or send signals to it, for example, to restore vision. Two-way BCIs would allow brains and external devices to exchange information in both directions. As you heard in the previous chapter, there is tremendous interest among the defense community in developing this capability and plenty of money to help make it happen. Like the gigantic shifts of humanity's past, our emerging neuro society is a wild card. It holds enormous, seemingly equal promise for inducing an age of bliss or a living nightmare. The reason so much more is at stake in this epical change is that our newest tools will give us nothing less than increasingly precise control over the most powerful factor in our lives, our own minds. Here is what I believe to be the overarching question. Does a citizen's right to privacy include his or her inner domain of thought? Depending on how we answer questions like these, the emerging technologies may be used to control us and keep us in cultural or economic bondage.